So 2009 paper, uh, gas laws question 23. So 23A, let's look at this together. Um, part one, using all the data, notice that that part is in, is in bold there. Using all the data, establish the relationship between pressure and volume of the gas. Um, so we're looking at pressure and volume. So we're looking at the first of our three gas laws. Go to the general gas law equation. That's P times V. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Um, so you, all you need to do is perform pressure times volume. So multiply these two numbers together for all four of these little things. If you do that, you'll find that, that P times V equals 2,000. 1,995, 2002, and 2001. That's all four values. Now, they're all around about the same value. They're not exactly the same, but then that's not going to happen. That would be a perfect experiment. And as you know from the errors unit, that doesn't exist. So P times V is equal to a constant. You could also say um, P times V is equal to 2,000, you know, if you round it up. Or you could say... P1, V1 equals P2, V2. That would be fine, provided that you had done the calculation up there. So you're going to get one mark for this little bit up here, and then one mark for saying either that or that P times V is a constant. Because remember that this just says the same thing. Is that that just says that P times V is constant. OK, part two. Now, this is similar to the, the kinetic theory one we've just looked at. So using the kinetic model, anytime you see that, you know that you're going to have to use your three Fs, or maybe only two. It depends on what's involved. Um, explain the change in pressure as the volume of gas decreases. So, volume decreases. So, particles collide more frequently, there's a, there's a first of our Fs, more frequently with, uh, with each other, and the container walls. So you're mentioning particles colliding with each other, and you're also mentioning, perhaps more crucially, that they collide more often with the container walls. The second of our Fs, this increases the average force, or you could just say force. The average force on the container walls increasing the pressure. Now, a lot of people struggle with these descriptions, but I think if you use those three Fs as your guide, it makes it easier. Increasing the pressure. So you're starting off with saying what happens to one variable and finishing off with saying what happens to the other. Everything in between is, is either faster, frequent, or forceful. Remember, unless temperature is mentioned, that's the only thing that can change the kinetic energy of a particle. Don't mention faster. If you put faster in there, you know that would be wrong physics. OK, B, part one. The density of water in a log is 1.02 times 10 to the power, I can't read that in this, what does it say? 3. Atmospheric pressure is 1.01 times 10 to the power 5. Show that uh, the total pressure at a depth of 12 metres, so that's H, in this log is 2.21 times 10 to the power 5. I take that so you need to calculate the pressure at depth, first of all, the pressure due to the water, which is rho gh, density times gravitational field strength times h, which is the depth of the water. Um, so 1020, or 1.02 times 10 to the power 3, uh, times 9.8, times 12, which is the depth that we're at. The answer you will get there is... 120,000 pascals, but as you see, if you look down here, that's not the answer. 
because we've got to add on atmospheric pressure as well because there is a pressure on the top uh, surface of the water and that's what keeps it flat it's air pressure pushing down on that so the total pressure at that depth is the pressure on the surface of the water from the air plus the pressure that you have uh, in, in the fluid that you're in in the water in this case so a total pressure equals 120,000 plus 1.01 times 10 to the power of 5, which is atmospheric pressure, and then you'll get 2.21 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals. So not too difficult there. Even if you couldn't remember about atmospheric pressure um, to add it on, you know, it's mentioned here, and then you would get an answer using rho gh, and you would, you would be like, okay, that's different. Where does that extra bit come from? And even without really understanding that, you, you, could, do, you could do that. It's not too difficult. Okay, part two. Um, at the surface of the log, the student brings in a volume of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3 um, meters cubed of air. Calculate the volume the air would occupy at a depth of 12 meters. So you've basically got um, a starting volume, you've got a starting pressure as well because you've got atmospheric pressure at the surface, you've got a finishing pressure at this depth of 12 metres, so you can calculate out um, what volume of, of air you would have at that depth because you can just use one of your gas laws. Temperature is constant, it says there, temperature, constant, so you know that you're going to go for Boyle's law, the one without T. P1, B1 equals P2, B2. So 1.01 times 10 to the power of 5 times 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3 will be equal to 2.21 times 10 to the power of 5 times B2. You'll get B2 being 6.86 times 10 to the negative 4 meters cubed. Okay, pretty simple. C, now this is the, you know, the more of the sort of explanation based questions, but to be honest, it kind of relates back to uh, the kinetic model. It's a very similar question to that, it's just worded differently. Um, at a depth of 12 meters, the diver fills her lungs with air from breathing apparatus, then swims to the surface. Explain why it would be dangerous for her to hold her breath whilst doing this. Well, if she's filling her air, uh, our lungs are there, then you've got some sort of associated volume there. Um, she's got some kind of volume associated with that. So if this is the, the water and this wee diver person's down here, they've got extra long arms. Um, and they've got a pair of lungs, but not much else. <laughs> so, the, apologies for what that looks like. Um, we'll put in some hair as well. So they're at a certain depth, and um, this is 12 meters, and they've got a volume of lungs, uh, a volume of air in the lungs. And um, they're at a certain depth, so that has a certain pressure as well at this depth. So you've got pressure here. As they travel upwards, pressure decreases, because remember the pressure increases with depth. So pressure decreases from our, our gas law here. We know that as pressure decreases, then volume increases. So they filled their lungs with air. They are going upwards, and pressure is decreasing, so therefore volume increases, so their lungs are basically inflating as they go upwards, um, so it could be dangerous from the point of view that their lungs could burst. That's really it. So, volume of air volume of air increases as diver swims upwards. Equals damage to lungs. 
in too much for that.